Okay. Thanks again for doing this. Um, sure. So the focus t- today is going to be on pre-K, child care, and youth services like after school programming and summer programming. Um, so I want to kick off with sort of the big picture, which is that there's a lot of federal attention right now being paid to uh, especially early childhood education. And with that is coming a lot of resources. And so I'd love to hear from you how you would prioritize using more federal funds to build and strengthen what we currently have here in New York City. So how would I use federal funds to strengthen what we currently have? Uh, I applaud President Biden's American Rescue Plan for expanding the child and, and defendant care tax credit so that all the families with incomes below $125,000, which is a number of families in New York City, uh, save up to half the cost of their eligible child care expenses and for providing what I think is close to a billion, $1.1 billion in direct, direct grants for child care. As part of my plan, my education plan, Cradle to Career Strategy, I will guarantee every parent access to quality early child care and education for infants and toddlers and the program to design to address all aspects of early childhood, which is going to help every kid enter school on a level playing field and ready to succeed. And I'm going to target federal funding to the child care deserts. These are providers on the verge of closing in areas with the greatest demand. The city is making strides to make to make pre-K more um, available, but infant and toddler care is still expensive and hard to come by. Um, so with your affordable child care for all plan, who would qualify for that? Uh, what ages would you serve? Where would these children be served? Right now we have a combination of, um, you know, community organizations and also public schools. So can you give us a little more detail about how you would build out this system and who would benefit from it? Sure, so um, how do I make it available for all those? Uh, How do I make it affordable and accessible? One, access. We gotta provide operating funds and capacity building to the existing programs, as well as an urgent grant program to help help to help to train providers and launch new programs in what are clearly childcare deserts. And then we need to make certain that we have quality of instruction best-in-class training or retraining where necessary to all child care providers. I'd work with CUNY and all the other early childhood education experts. We'll develop a standard curriculum and certification for all providers based on best practices. Like we have one great one at CUNY, CUNY's Quality Stars New York program. And then we got to ensure that, that uh, their affordable child care slots for every family needs them. Out-of-pocket costs for families will be based on income, with families at lower levels, including those receiving, so we'll receive fully subsidized child care. And to cover the cost, we're going to leverage existing funding streams, such as Early Head Start and the federal programs, which we outlined from the outset. Do you envision this in terms of the family side, how they would access these programs? Would it be like a voucher program or how would it work? Yeah, I think a voucher program would work well. We need to make certain that that we treat these vouchers differently to how the city's treated many other vouchers is that you got to actually pay on time. So the providers to whom the vouchers are given can actually continue to operate. So yes, I would cut the bureaucracy, extend the vouchers, make sure that they are paid on time and make sure we get the best quality childcare, especially in the childcare deserts. And when you're talking about affordable childcare for all, what age group are we talking about here? I think we started early. I want to go my, my cradle to career. Education strategy has at its core, I want to start early. Pre-K is good, but as you know, by the time we get to pre-K, many of our children are uh, already behind. So I want to start the early child care program at zero, so zero to three, zero to four, to give them the kind of uh, care that's necessary to make sure we have the, the appropriate uh, reward for those caregivers as well. So I want to start early. So that's what you hope to do. Um, Our current system, um, we have a voucher system where there's currently a backlog for families who want to benefit from this program. And meanwhile, providers say that they have slots in their centers that are going empty. So what's your diagnosis of where the problem is there and how would you solve it? You know, part of this is to make certain that we advertise that the programs exist that we have ambassadors, if you will, who can go into the communities and to the faith-based 
uh, organizations and to uh, the community centers. We need to revive the community centers. But part of this is letting the community know that the services exist, that there is, in fact, affordable child care. And so part of this is advertising and getting into the community organizations and funding them, making sure that they're well run. And once we've done that and given the, the option for child care, uh, my confidence is that we will bridge that gap of those people who need it, who don't know about it, and get those people who don't know about it into the, uh, into, into the opportunity. I want to turn to the workforce, the early childhood education workforce, which is predominantly women and many women of color. They're among the lowest paid workers in the city. And while the city has made progress on salary parity in some areas, um, there's still things like longevity pay um, and also teachers in special education pre-K centers have not seen uh, much movement uh, in terms of sal salary equity. So what is your plan for addressing salary parity during your administration? And do you have a timeline in which you'd like to see that accomplished? So what is my plan to address salary parity? It is immediate. My plan is to make sure that it's immediate. Given what's taking place in the school system today, we need our child care givers. So my initiatives will support child care workers in this city, many of whom are small business owners and were amongst the most impacted by the pandemic. Salary parity is, is key to supporting them. All child care providers are going to have a seat at the table. When these initiatives are introduced, ensure they earn fair wages and benefits. Investing in child care for all is going to increase for local providers so they can continue to grow and create more accessible jobs in our communities. I have a track record of making certain that where we need to make certain that we are equitable, pay equity, we need to do that. And given that this is these are the most precious times for our children, we need to make certain that we have salary equity. So I have said, Pre-K is good before pre-K and making certain that those child care givers are appropriately compensated. So I want to turn to youth services now. Um, after school and summer programming are really important for working families, but providers say that every year they're caught in a budget dance where they have to advocate for this funding to be reallocated. And so I'm wondering, are there specific programs in these areas that you would like to see funded on a more um, long-term basis? And if so, which ones? Yes. Uh, so after school and summer programs are essential. You know, the way I got here, I got here through education. I had a summer job that allowed me to, to one, have that summer job so I could learn about the possibilities. It also allowed me to, it was a paid summer internship. My sense, my view and my education plan addresses this directly is that uh, we need to invest in after school and summer programming, which is critical for the students to stay engaged. We've lost far too many. During the free time, they can learn skills in areas that may not be taught in school. I will increase funding and training to the local not-for-profit so they have the capacity to provide a multitude of after school and summer options for the students. They can include uh, programs in theater, in coding, in nutrition and all the other academic subjects. We need to invest now in our children as we move from an industrial world to a technology world. And for the older students, I'm gonna leverage my relationship, both big and small New York City employers to launch what I call my, my comeback summer jobs program. I'm gonna build on the existing youth summer empl employment program, which is one of the first things that this administration said it was gonna cut. I'm gonna build on that, guarantee a summer job to every New York City public high school student who wants one. Summer jobs, are they help our young people develop skills and relationships, and they allow them to get the first job out of high school or valuable internships during college. They're fundamental to this city. So whatever it takes, public-private partnerships, of which I would be very supportive, to get our kids paid summer internships so they understand the possibilities of the future are also part of my cradle-to-career core education where I restructure education here. So it's not random pre-K to 12, but it's transformed to be intentional about how our kids grow and develop and have opportunities. Something else that's really important for working families is to have child care on the typical school day or the school year, year round care and extended hours. Uh, providers say that there are not enough of these slots. Do you think that access to extended day and extended school year slots should be universal? I do. I think that we should uh, increase given where we are. Given where we are in education, when our child's children's lives are determined by their zip code, and if I look at the nation's report card and the state report card, we're third through eighth grade students, black and brown, 80% below proficient. Yes, I, need, I want to extend the school year. I want to extend the school day 
to take care of that three to five or three to eight hour where a lot of the mischief occurs. Make sure that we have invested in our children during those times in the community centers. Focus on making certain we give the resources to the community center so that we can end summer jobs, clearly summer jobs, and maybe even year round as I think about my overall approach to education. So the answer is yes, we should have it across the city and we should have it available to all New Yorkers. Does that include childcare and pre-K? It does include childcare and pre-K. Yes, I want to transform this, right? It can't be the case today that this is sustainable because we have the systemic inequities that exist in education. Our children are not being educated in the way that they should be. We pay $26,000 a year to educate a child on average in New York City. We pay $446,000 a year to keep an inmate at Rikers Island. We need to invest now or pay later. I'd rather invest today. So I want to zoom out to the school year to come. Um, the next mayor will, uh, will take office about midway through the next school year. But I'd love to hear from you what you think the city needs to be doing now to build trust with families so that they actually return to in-person learning. We've seen steep drop-offs in enrollment in pre-K this year, and we've seen many families of color decide not to return to buildings. So how can the city turn that tide for the next school year? So the first thing we need to do is to plan for it better than what we planned for this school year. And that means we need to have those people who provide the tablets available. We need to build the broadband out immediately so that to the extent that, that we do, and I'm saying this is the last alternative, because I think kids need to be in school. I think our teachers need to be in school, which means that we need to get the vaccination out. We need to have a better, a better way of communicating the vaccination because many, of, many people in our community are skeptical of vaccination. So we need to make sure that they understand that the, vac vac that the vaccine is is, is uh, you know, this efficacious, that the vaccine is not going to harm. We need to do a much better job at that. We need to get the vaccine into the healthcare and transportation desert so that all those who are eligible for the vaccine and how we've reduced the age requirements can get a vaccine. We need to educate on the safety and the efficacy of the vaccine. We need to get our kids back in school. So I would plan for our kids getting back in school immediately, which is how I'm going to address the, the COVID vaccine, get them back into school, get the teachers back in school. And then as a insurance, let's make sure that all of our children have tablets and or laptops at work and that we have broadband that's accessible. I sat on the board of New York Public Library where we made certain that we could, where available, get Wi-Fi hotspots into the branches so that kids can go do homework. Our children need to have access to Wi-Fi. It is, should be a basic right for anybody, but especially our children here. There's a lot of attention paid to segregation in the K-12 space in New York City schools, but... Pre-K is actually more segregated than kindergarten classrooms here, but it's often left out of the conversation. And so I'm wondering, is uh, integration at the pre-K level something that's important to you? And if so, do you have any ideas for how to address that? So the answer is, I am looking forward to having quality education in every zip code. It is not possible to integrate so that we can achieve that through integration. So where we can integrate, I'd be for integration. So I want to be clear. Only way I got here is education. So I want the highest quality education in whatever form. It comes in the form of integration. It comes in the form of district schools. It comes in the form of magnet schools. It comes in the form of parochial schools. And it comes in the form of charter schools. Parents have a choice. Let's make certain we get the highest quality education so the parents can choose that which is best for their children. And so that means, yes, uh, integration, if that's going to achieve that, but how far are you going to integrate? How far are you going to integrate a child in a completely different borough? So uh, that becomes that much more challenging, given the, all the other challenges that our parents or caregivers have to take them from one borough, her, her or him from one borough to the next borough. As a toddler, pre-K, it's not so practical that we can do that. But what we can do is make sure we got the best toddler pre-K programs in our districts, in our, in, our, in our zip codes, which is that which I'm going to advocate for at the highest level with the loudest voice. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you quickly in case there's anything that we haven't addressed in terms of the early education space um, and youth services space that you think is really important to get in here. And before we end it too, we need to get just five seconds of silence. So open the floor to you. So listen, education is what got me here. We need to make certain, ensure that every child in New York City gets an education 
so that they have the opportunity to go on and be productive citizens in this community. Today, uh, we're not doing that. And today we need to transform the way we approach education from the random pre-K to 12 to something that's much more intentional, which is my plan for cradle to career, which you can see at rayformair.com, focus solely on what's in the best interest of New York City's children. We have a triangle, which are the parents, the caregivers, and the child. The parents, caregivers, and the teacher, or the parents, teachers, all together, and the child. And so we need to focus on that triangle. And today, we need to bring it together in ways that, up to this point, we've not done so well. My focus is on, again, on educating our children. 